you know Cyril Ramaphosa as the president of the country may not be the best of the best Cyril Ramaphosa as the politician he has his own mistakes he is not perfect there is not a politician that is perfect there is not a political party that is perfect despite us being critical of Cyril Ramaphosa but every day there are people that are actually pushing me to gravitate towards the Cyril Ramaphosa there are people that are saying outrageous things and every time these people open their mouths they actually make me appreciate the fact that the Cyril Ramaphosa is the president of the country i mean right now you have Solima Paila i think this guy is the secretary general of the SACP something like that and the man is basically not happy about the government of national unity he is not happy about the fact that the DA has been included in the government of national unity if if it was according to him the ANC would have opted to work with the EFF this is despite the ANC saying that it is impossible for us to get into governance with the EFF we don't want to work with the EFF the ANC the political party that has been voted by the people of this country says that we don't want to work with the EFF but for some reason SACP is not happy with the decision that Ramaphosa and ANC has made now they are out in the media they are bashing Cyril Ramaphosa they are attacking the government of national unity because they think that if we had a governance of ANC and the EFF things would actually be better in the country i mean like this is totally outrageous i took the initiative i called the EFF i had several meetings with them so it's for the record you will know i have meetings with them to ask them that guys let's join these forces and keep out this right wing reactionary forces out of the process and to start like when solima paila says that i took the initiative to call the EFF and i had a couple of meetings with the EFF who voted for solima paila who voted for SACP because south africans voted for the ANC they didn't vote for the SACP now he's not happy with the fact that ANC did what ANC wanted instead of doing what SACP wanted who voted for you because i think right now it is fair to say that if you want the governance with the EFF distance yourself from the ANC and run on your own let's see how far you get distance yourself from the ANC let's see how far you get and why are you having meetings with the EFF why are you having the meetings with the EFF who asked you to have those meetings with the EFF because south africans didn't vote for you man you know i'm so sick and tired man of these unelected bureaucrats going around and pretending like they can make decisions on behalf of the people that voted and didn't vote for them why would you make meetings with the EFF why would you have meetings with the EFF when no one voted for you if you wanted to form your own coalition with the EFF maybe you could have ran on your own the SACP they could have registered as the political party then you can have your own meetings with the ANC with the EFF now you are not happy with the fact that ANC decided to work with the DA and other people in the government of national unity you are not happy because no one actually listened to you you are not happy with the fact that maybe you are not as influential as you thought you were i'm so tired man of these unelected bureaucrats man i took the initiative i called the EFF i had several meetings with them so it's for the record you will know i have meetings with them to ask them that guys let's join these forces and keep out this right wing reactionary forces out of the process and you were speaking on behalf of who this is what i like I, I, i'm failing to understand you were speaking on behalf of who as the SACP you are speaking on behalf of who because no one voted for you of course during that week the ANC NEC says no we are going with the government of national unity uh, uh, we are inviting everyone then the EFF comes and say no 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 they're not going to join that if everyone is in included particularly the DA and the EFF I, I mean the freedom front they even went further than us and said no 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 not just uh, these are colonial forces 
Of course, man, like the ANC made the decision because the ANC was voted for the people of this country. Why are you not happy with the fact that the people actually gave Ramaphosa a mandate and Ramaphosa delivered on the mandate of the people? This idea that the ANC, NEC made a huge mistake by opting for the government of national unity and these people pretended like they know better than the ANC. If you know better than the ANC, why don't you... Like this, like this is one question that I'm going to ask until the video is over. Why don't you register a political party and run on your own? You want to make the decisions that ANC is not in line with. And when ANC makes its own decisions mandated by the people of this country via their votes, you are angry. Guys, but where, where do we live actually? Where do we live? Where do we live? <laughs> so, when they did that, I'm like, oh my gosh. Because now, the ANC is being pushed once more onto the corn. But we never stopped the ANC even from talking to MK Pat. We said that even in our statement. So talk to everyone, as we have said you want. But we said, ideally, if you were to establish government, no to the force of state capture and force of neoliberalism of austerity well things moved fast as you know former president jay z went to say okay we're not going to accept these elections i think people started shivering even black twitter started responding oh cnz ah. and when the middle class get too easily excited Easy. you know what is fun is that this guy says that President Rama, President Zuma denied the election results. Why is he not condemning Zuma for denying the election results? Knowing very well how influential Jacob Zuma is. Knowing very well that when someone like Jacob Zuma says that I do not accept this election results. Something like there's a possibility that there could be riots or, or some stuff like that. Because this is Jacob Zuma after all. Whether you like Jacob Zuma or you don't like Jacob Zuma. At the end of the day, you have to understand that Jacob Zuma is influential. Jacob Zuma is very popular. So why are you not condemning Jacob Zuma for possibly overturning our, our, our democracy? Why are you not condemning that? You are busy trying to make decisions on behalf of the ANC. And when ANC makes their own decisions, you get angry. On the other side, you have Jacob Zuma. Jacob Zuma say, no, I do not accept the election results. And this guy is focused on the people that are easily excited. More, this is not people being easily excited. This is South Africans understanding the influence of Jacob Zuma. This is South Africans understanding that Jacob Zuma is quite popular. So when someone like that says that we do not accept the election results, people are starting to panic and wonder what is going to happen with the country going forward. This is not people simply getting excited because oh, Jacob Zuma said something. No, this is concerned to South Africans. Worried about the future. Understanding the person who actually made those remarks. And for you not to even condemn Jacob Zuma for <laughs> denying the election results. You are focusing on the people that are getting excited over that. Man, I do not respect these unelected bureaucrats. Man, I do not respect the people that are trying to impose their will on the people. When people didn't vote for them. I do not respect it. They start saying, hey, what have we done? We're not asking for this outcome. Well, of course, that's the outcome. Now, with that, we, the Chief Justice convened a meeting in Parliament. The ANC goes there. It has no revolutionary forces backing it. The ANC had to set up government. I got the EFM. Guys, what are you doing? They said, no, I want to be in America serious. Went to the ANC. Hey, man, what's your problem? Why can't you be patient and engage with these forces? Or maybe the ANC was simply trying to tell you, like, you are not as influential. I mean, maybe your opinions are not needed right now. Maybe your opinions are not needed right now. You should have got a hint that maybe, just maybe, your opinions are not needed right now. No one voted for you, so please sit back and allow the ANC to make the decisions that they are going to make 
on behalf of the people that actually voted for them. You are talking with a political party that has been voted by over 6 million people in this country. That has been given mandate by people, over 6 million people, given the ANC mandate. No one gave you the mandate. No one gave you the mandate. So why were you there trying to make the decisions or trying to, 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 to sway things to move how you want them to move? You are talking about the ANC, you go into parliament without the revolutionary forces. What are the revolutionary forces? Are you talking about the same EFF? The same EFF that we are discussing today? Is this the EFF that you are talking about? <laughs> Man, don't get me started. Don't get me started, man, because when if I start talking about the EFF right now, like I'm going to spend the whole day speaking about these people. So don't get me started. No, two problems. Where is Sydney? Philip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was convinced that school no man's and I think I discussed this important question in the Communist Party directly with the general secretary. I've opened the line to you. Two questions arise out of this, uh, Comrade Sidney. Like, guys, just listen to the arrogance, man. Like, you cannot make these decisions without meeting the Communist Party. Like, this is like, like, like guys, just listen to the sheer arrogance coming from these people. Just listen to the sheer arrogance coming from these people. That the ANC, it cannot make the decisions without discussing with the Communist Party. <laughs> <laughs> man this is insane this is insane the, in the ANC there's always been a neoliberal faction which is the dominant faction today so it's a class battle to push that neoliberal faction inside the African National Congress because its orientation will always go towards the DA. That is why the mammarins, even during the campaign, was that there's negotiations between the ANC and the DA. People denied this thing and so forth and so forth. And this thing was now coming to fruition. We tried to move around. First they, because the ANC, after one or two meetings, they rejected the EFF and said, no, we can't go. This, uh, the EFF uh, don't respect us and so forth. And why don't you respect the decision of the ANC? Why are you trying to force the ANC to work with the EFF? Why don't you respect the decision of the ANC? Like I said, <laughs> if you want to work with the ANC, with the EFF so much, maybe you should register as a political party and run on your own. Then maybe you can work with the EFF that you like. Distance yourself from the NC. Tell the NC that, guys, now that you have decided to work with this racist right wing anti anti transformation DA and the Freedom Fund Plus, we no longer want anything to do with you. As the South African Communist Party, we are going to run on our own. I'm going to be the Secretary General of the South African Communist Party. Maybe Blade in the Monday can be the President of the SACP. Let's see how far the SACP goes. Let's see how, the, how far the SACP goes. Because you guys there, maybe your, your inputs are welcome. Maybe your suggestions are welcome. But at the end of the day, ANC makes the decisions. At the end of the day, ANC makes the decisions. And I, don't, I, 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 I do not trust you to be around the ANC. When you can go on public and actually discredit the ANC for making the decisions that the ANC thinks they are best for the party to make. Because if the, a if the NEC didn't want the ANC to, to, to forge a government of national unity, if the, if, if, if the NEC didn't want the ANC to form the government of national unity, they would have told Ramaphosa, that Ramaphosa, no man, we like we don't want to work with these people. We don't want to work with these people, but we simply want to work with the EFF. They would have told him. But the NC went ahead <laughs> and formed a government of national unity. 
register a party, man. Register a party. Let's see how popular you are. Let's see how popular you are. Let's see you actually conducting those negotiations with the EFF. Go ahead and register a party. I did not give up. The first day I went to meet uh, Comrade Floyd is the day after I, I buried my brother. I lost my brother when I was at the Sengoba rally. I went to see him. I said, hey man, comrade, you can't continue this way. I went to the ANC. It was back and forth. Begging people to actually focus on the possible revolutionary path. It will be better to be irritated by the EFF in cabinet than to be irritated by the neoliberal forces who want to be dominant and take control of the revolution. And how do you know that when you are not in government? How do you know that when you are not in governance? How do you know that? How do you know that? Because the Secretary General of the ANC, Figuilem Balula, told us that no, man, we don't want the headache that is going to come with working with the EFF. The Secretary General of the ANC, Figuilem Balula, says we don't want the headache that is going to come with working with the EFF. You, as SACP, says that no, it's better you guys work with the EFF instead of working with these people that we are working with today. The arrogance of these people, man. These people, they just remind me, even with the unions, man, of how arrogant the unions are in this country. They remind me of how arrogant the unions are in this country. And do you think that if this person was actually given a deputy minister job, he would be on the stage complaining the way that he is because his friend Bladen Zimande is not making any noise. Bladen Zimande also comes from the SCP but he's not making any noise because Bladen Zimande is a minister in the cabinet. So is this person actually talking because he's, he, he's legitimately worried about the ANC or he's simply talking because he's left outside? Are you angry because you were left outside? I'm not the leader of the EFM, but I went to see them and I want to appreciate that they, they respected my engagement. I know them. I gave Floyd his first job. He was the leader of the Young Communist League. Yes, not that he has to pay back anything. <laughs> yes, but we have a line. I can talk to him. Nothing stops me from talking to him. So we have an engagement. And Dr. Ndlozi, we had an engagement with all of them. We agreed, guys. This is now the new strategy going forward. And how can you guys agree when none of you are actually in governance? The EFF is not in governance, SNCP is not in governance. How can you guys reach an agreement on anything that has to do with governance? Why are you guys reaching an agreement on things that actually has nothing to do with the governance? Or maybe is this the reason why the EFF was being arrogant towards the NC? Because they were having conversations with the SACP and they actually thought that, okay, we're going to get rid of Ramaphosa because listening to this guy, Solima Paila, you can actually hear that they didn't want Ramaphosa to be the president of the ANC anymore. But because Ramaphosa is a sophisticated politician, for some reason, he finds himself as the president of the ANC. Is this the reason why the EFF was behaving the way that they were? Because maybe they could have gotten some assurances that no, Ramaphosa is going to get out. ANC dropped from fifteen percent, from 57% to 40%, so Ramaphosa is going to get out. It is quite strange, man. It is strange that someone can go in public and to tell people that, guys, I tried to conduct business on behalf of the ANC. I tried to speak with the political parties that I thought would be best to get into coalition with the NC, despite us not being voted by anyone else. I tried to make those decisions on behalf of the NC. But some of the comrades in the ANC, particularly this new liberal faction, was too impatient. They did not want to engage with them. They did not even want to offer them something serious. And yet they went on to offer 
these reactionary forces, anti-revolutionary forces, colonial forces, so much power. This is the issue. Then the other faction inside the African National Congress was too helpless to reconfigure this. They debated in the, in the NEC and so forth, we understand, but it didn't go anywhere. The NC had its set up political power, then it has to do this with the DA. But listen to how the DA tops up this thing to their advantage. In the morning, in Parliament, President Adrian Basson of News24 releases to the media two signatures, Figilem Balula, Helen Zil, to the public. Nothing else, just the signature. Everyone is furious, is angry. The ANC has sold out. Coordinated. That same day. So it doesn't give the people the truth. What Comrade Mbalo is saying here is the truth. When we engage with them, the ANC said, okay, we've developed this framework for engagement. We are setting up government of national unity. This will be the statement of government of national unity. We said, okay, bring it here so that we want to make inputs. They brought it to us. I gave final authorization half past two in the morning to Dr. Alex Mashil for our comments. They were meaningless. Yes, they were meaningless. You need to know these things. <laughs> so what? <laughs> so what? <laughs> so what? <laughs> you are not happy. You are not happy with the fact that they actually showed you that. You are not as influential as you thought. <laughs> so what? So what? Of course your input is meaningless. <laughs> of course your input is meaningless. Of course. And quite frankly, man, I think even ANC is starting to get pissed off with you guys. <laughs> I think ANC is starting to get pissed off with you guys because... Every, every decision that the NC makes, it has to deal with SACP and other alliance partners <laughs> going against it. <laughs> so they are sick and tired of you. They are sick and tired of you. You can have your inputs, man. <laughs> like, I'm not in governance, but I understand <laughs> that you can have your inputs. <laughs> you, can have, you can have your inputs, but it doesn't mean that your inputs will be the final decision. And now you are calling half of ANC NEC useless simply because these people found a a common ground and actually understood why they had to forge the government of national unity. Not only did you attack the quote unquote the Ramaphosa function, you also attacked the other function within the NEC because you basically called them useless. <laughs> you called them useless. <laughs> these people are something else. These people are something else, man. I don't know what the hell was ANC doing. I don't know what the hell ANC was doing, man. And this whole sellout rhetoric, man, is not going to work anymore. South Africans will not fall for that anymore. So you are telling us if ANC had actually worked with the EFF, the ANC would have not sold out. You are telling us if the ANC had worked with a political party that has told the South Africans for years that they didn't get anything from VBS, they would have not sold out. <laughs> this whole rhetoric, man, it makes no sense. And this whole rhetoric can only excite the people that are, are short-sighted. It can only excite the people that are short-sighted. No one said that the EFF cannot come into the government of national unity. They are the ones who actually push themselves out of the government of national unity. EFF didn't want to work with the DA. They didn't want to work with Patriotic with, with with the Freedom Fan Plus. The EFF basically hates the DA and they hate the Freedom Fan Plus. But you can look again at a political party like Patriotic Alliance. Patriotic Alliance feels the same way the EFF feels about the Democratic Alliance. But Patriotic Alliance did not allow their hatred to actually push them out of the government of national unity. They did not allow that to happen. Now the EFF is like, 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 like right now, the EFF, it, 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 like it has no value right now. It has no value. It's a 9% political party. It is the fourth 
biggest political party in the country. So when we talk about the big political parties in the country, we no longer mention the EFF because we have the MK party and the MK party is a huge political party with 14%. It's a huge political party. So the EFF, like the EFF does not even deserve to be in governance because even if you look at the numbers, this is not what the people wanted. The people did not want the EFF to be in governance. If anything, maybe we could actually argue that the people wanted MK party to be in governance, not EFF. Because you look at how people actually voted. They voted for the ANC, they voted for the DA, and they voted for Umkundu Assis. So you could actually argue that maybe the will of the people would, would actually be ANC getting into governance with the DA or ANC getting into governance with the Umkundu Assis. But ANC getting into governance with the EFF, that will not be the will of the people. That will not be the will of the people. It will not be the will of the people. And even if ANC decided to work with the EFF, their numbers would not be enough. Their numbers would not be enough, but ANC could have easily formed a governance with the DA alone. And ANC could have easily formed a governance with MK party alone. So right now, the EFF has no influence. It, it, like, it has gone from being a big political party. Now it's just a smaller political party looking at the numbers on the board. It is not. So trying to force the EFF to go into governance, it is not the will of the people. It, that, it is not the will of the people. The people actually distanced themselves away from the EFF. They didn't vote for the EFF. <laughs> they didn't give the EFF extra votes. No, they didn't do that. They voted for Umkundu Asizu. So maybe if you were making an argument about Umkundu Asizu, I could say that potentially you are like, potentially maybe there is some, there is some merit to what you are talking about. But speaking about the EFF, no man, you cannot force a political party that is there on number four. <laughs> you cannot force them and say that these people were supposed to get in there. They were supposed to form governance. No, they were not supposed to do anything. They were not supposed to do anything. South Africans, by their votes, they actually indicated that we don't want you guys to get into governance. We don't want you guys to get into governance. We don't like your policy, whatever that you are trying to sell. We don't like it. This sell-out rhetoric, this white monopoly sell rhetoric, when you people are capitalists, right now you have you are the, you, you, you are a a leader in the SACP. And right now we are busy discussing the affidavit of the former chair of VBS. And the former chair of VBS also implicated SACP. Said SACP got 3 million rands from VBS. They got 3 million rands from VBS. Right now, the same EFF that you are talking on behalf of, they don't know whether to agree that they got the money from VBS or not because today they say that it was a donation. Tomorrow they say, no, we didn't get that money. So they don't know actually where they stand. I see some of the podcasters that are actually pro EFF saying that there was nothing wrong with EFF getting a donation from VBS simply because Dalimpofu went on national television and said that the EFF, yeah, uh, we got the funds from, <laughs> from VBS only for him tomorrow to go on 702 to deny what he said live on national television. You guys were supposed to be talking about the VBS and that 3 million rands that you actually got from poor people's money. And these are the things that are actually important to South Africans. So this whole sellout rhetoric, it is not working with the people of this country. The people of this country understand that you guys are calling yourselves communist, but you are actually capitalist. They look at the EFF, they look at how the leadership of the EFF lives, and they can see that these people are capitalists. But every time they go out in public and they scream socialism, they scream communism, so you guys are fake revolutionaries, pseudo revolutionaries who are trying to gaslight the South Africans by, by this rhetoric of yours of, of, of sell out of what? It is no longer going to work. It is no longer going to work, man. South Africans are more sophisticated today. South Africans are, are more sophisticated today. You cannot gaslight the South Africans into loving you. And you cannot actually make South Africans think that you guys are actually communist. You guys are not communist. You are not communist. You look at communism and you look at what communism means and you look at how these people live. You guys are not communist. You are not socialist. But it is nice for you to actually speak like this because you can actually gaslight some of the people, some, a small fraction. But right now, South Africans in general, they cannot be gaslit by these things that you people are saying. So you cannot say that the ANC has sold out by actually working with the DA and 10 other political parties. And right now you are standing on stage and pretending like the ANC has solely got into coalition with the DA. Whereas there are other political parties and there are other quote unquote black political parties in that coalition. 
there are other black political parties. So why are you making it look like the NC has solely got into governance with the, with the DA? And even if the ANC has got into governance with the DA, what would be the problem? Because it's the will of the people. You take 40% of the ANC, you take 22% of the DA, it is 62%. It is the will of the people. It is the will of the people. You take ANC's 40%, you take 15% um controversies, you have 55%. It is the will of the people. You take ANC's 40% and you take EFF's 9%. It is less than 50%. It is not the will of the people. It is not the will of the people. So why are you here crying about ANC working with the DA and other political parties? Why are you crying because Sir Ramaphosa decided not to go with the route of coalitions, but he actually decided, or the ANC, NEC, they came to a consensus that maybe we need to forge a government of national unity. We need to forge a government of national unity. South Africans have actually told us that we cannot govern anymore. We cannot make decisions alone anymore. They want other political parties to get into governance. So the ANC actually understood what South Africans told them. This is what Ramaphosa said on his inauguration speech. That ANC basically lost the elections. <laughs> we have lost the elections. We cannot make the decisions alone anymore. We cannot make the decisions alone anymore. If anything, South Africans actually told us that they want us to govern with other political parties. They no longer want us to govern alone. Man, you know this was supposed to be a funny video, man. I was supposed to be laughing at this video, but I'm, I'm getting worked up right now listening to this guy. I'm getting worked up listening to like to a person like that was trying to make the decisions on behalf of the political party that was voted by the, by the people, whereas no one voted for him. It is outrageous that you can go out in public and say that you wanted ANC to, to, to go this route. When no one voted for you. And when ANC says, yeah, you can come and give us your input. They, you gave your input and your input was... Uh, now you are crying. Because for some reason you thought that your input would actually be a final decision. The sheer arrogance of you guys. The unelected bureaucrats that are benefiting from the state. The unelected bureaucrats that are benefiting from the state. I don't like you guys. I don't want to lie at all. I don't like you at all. They were meaningless as I give final authorization half past two in the morning to Alex. No, I have left my house for this task. I'm awake. I was waiting for this. He sent it to the AHC. What he signed is not the comment that we asked from the Alliance. Because we went to the to said, no, you can't have a statement that has not been approved by the alliance. Also, Who are you to tell the NC what we have, man? <laughs> but Spagabant will set up this thing. They ignore their views. But the issue is, when Basson, Adrian, threw this thing in the media, already showing the ANC as a sellout, opting to work with the, with the DA, as things are taking place in Parliament, lunchtime, Stein has an address a press conference, announces the agreement that they've signed the, this agreement with the African National Congress. We were not party to it. So get over it then. Get over it. <laughs> get over it. <laughs> get over it. So, so that you know, we're not party to it. I mean, like, even if we know, it's not like the South Africans knowing that the SACP was never involved in the huge decisions that were made for the government of national unity. Even if we know that you guys were not involved, it's not like it's going to make anything. It's not going to tilt anything. It is not going to tilt anything. It is not going to make a difference to South Africans' lives. It is not going to make a difference to South Africans' lives. If maybe this was another faction of the ANC saying that the, the other half didn't listen to us. We tried to, to, to actually make them understand that this is not the route they can take. We tried to make them think that, okay, guys, let's go back. And, and Ramaphosa went ahead and made his announcement and things like that. I, I, I would say that, okay, maybe there was a blunder here. Maybe the ANC is about to break. But looking at how the ANC is operating right now, the ANC is operating fully. Man. Ramaphosa added another portfolios in governance. 
for those people that we thought that okay the ANC was no longer going to have as much as influence as we thought before but what did Ramaphosa do what did Ramaphosa do he gave the DA six ministerial positions he gave patriotic alliance ministerial positions he gave uh, what is this IFP ministerial positions he gave other parties the deputy ministerial positions and what did Ramaphosa do he added another portfolio so that the comrades of the ANC can still eat he decided he made another he made another post in governance so that the comrades in the ANC can still eat so it doesn't matter that you guys were not included this is what i'm trying to say it doesn't matter it doesn't matter you can scream sell out all you want it doesn't matter one thing I know is that ma majority of South Africans, they are actually behind the government of National Unity. They are behind it. Don't let people actually fool you. South Africans are behind the government of National Unity. South Africans are happy with the fact that we have other ministers from other political parties in governance right now. South Africans are happy with the progress that has been made ever since the government of National Unity has been formed. They are happy. So the alliance partners... They can scream all they want. They can scream all they want. Go ahead and join the EFF. Go and be an alliance party of the EFF. Let's go and see if, if, if Julius Malema would actually allow you to actually make the decisions on behalf of the EFF. Go and join the EFF. Join the EFF. And after you have joined the EFF, make the decisions on behalf of the EFF. Let's see what Julius Malema will treat you like. Julius Malema, your fellow, your fellow revolutionary, go. Go. Pretending like Julius Malema was going to sit down and let him make the decisions on behalf of the EFF. Every political party has the right to make their own decisions. We can be an alliance, we can be the partners, we can, but at the end of the day, the political parties have the right to make their own decisions. So if SSCP is not happy, they can go and distance themselves from the ANC. ANC is not going to get hurt. I don't think that there are South Africans who actually think about SSCP before they vote. When people vote in that booth, they are looking at the political parties, they are looking at the options that are given to them, and they are voting on those options. No one actually thinks about the South African Communist Party before they vote for the ANC. Go and join the EFF, and after joining the EFF, try, I, I, I dare you, try to make the decisions on behalf of Julius Malema and the EFF. Let's see how the EFF will treat you. Let's see how the EFF will treat you, because this is basically what you have done. This is what you have done. You tried to make the decisions on behalf of the NC, whereas no one voted for you. Whereas no one voted for you. I dare you to go and join the EFF. If you don't want to join the EFF, register a political party and run independently of the NC as the political party. Let's see how far you go. Let's see if South Africans can actually listen to your rhetoric. Let's see if South Africans will fall in love with the rhetoric of the South African Communist Party. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I dare you to do that. I dare you. I dare you. Guys, these people, man, we, we, we cannot be soft on these people. Because what they are trying to do right now, they are trying to undermine the governance. The same governance that is, is, is still a bit fragile because everything is still being put to place. And we have alliance partners or the organizations like the SACP trying to undermine everything trying to undermine all the work that has been put in so i dare these people man i like i honestly dare them to join the eff and try to make the decisions on behalf of the eff let's see how the revolutionary raid overall treat you let's see let's see <laughs> what the dictator in chief treat you man man julius malema man would embarrass you when <laughs> julius malema man will do a press conference and he will tell you where to get off you are lucky that ANC still believes in the freedom of speech. You are lucky that ANC it is not as aggressive as it was before. You are lucky. But I dare, man, if anyone wants to, 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 to run things as they like, I dare you to join the EFF and go and, and make that talk and, and, and tell the people how much the EFF has made the terrible decisions. Go and join the EFF and, and let a, a EFF make two, three decisions and criticize them on those decisions. Let's see how that works out for you. Let's see. Julius Malema would never stand for that nonsense. 
Julius Malamode never stand for that nonsense. Guys, please tell me what you think about the comment section. Don't forget to hit that like button. And the most important part is subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. My name is Thomas Mabaso. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.